Hi, I'm Kelsey Green, and welcome to this month's hashtag All the Feels. It's one of those classic childhood stories. I'm at the pool with my family, and my dad is helping me learn how to swim in the shallow part of the pool. He is holding on to me and guiding me along the water when all of a sudden he lets go to let me learn how to do it on my own. Instead of taking this new found freedom and swimming on my own, I start to panic and freak out thinking that I'm about to drown. I'm grasping for air and flailing my arms around hoping my dad will rescue me. All the while my dad is yelling something at me that I really cannot make out in the midst of my panic. Suddenly, his arms are around me, and he says in all his kindness, Kelsey, just stand up. The water only came to about my waist. I was freaking out and fearing something that was never going to hurt me. If only I would have listened to the voice of my dad sooner, I could have quickly overcome that fear. This month, we are discussing the emotion of fear and studying Psalm 55. Here's the truth. We all struggle with fear. There is a diverse and vast list of fears and phobias that people deal with. The Gallup organization even did a survey on a group of Americans a few years back, and the top two fears that were reported were snakes and public speaking. Some of you may dislike or even fear those, but some of our fears go even beyond, such as fear of death, fear of disease, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of losing someone, we cannot physically grab these things or point to them like you could with a snake, but the fear that encompasses us is still so real. Oftentimes though, in the midst of these real fears, our minds play the what ifs game, where we like to imagine the worst possible scenario for what we are facing. Dwelling on the possibilities of what might happen often produces an oppressive restlessness our minds and souls never get to be at ease and rest because we are always contemplating the next thing to go wrong. Fear is one of the enemy's favorite tactics to use against us because it easily overwhelms us and seems to isolate us from those around. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 8 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. We see here that we are urged to cast all fear and anxieties on the Lord because the first attack the enemy will make is to bring fear in our mind. Peter even tells us to be sober-minded, meaning that we need to be studious of the Bible so that when the enemy comes to cause havoc and chaos in our mind, we will know God's word against the enemy's tactics. When we dive into the word of God, we read such verses as John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Jesus does not give us a cheap peace that will not last when the enemy brings the next thing to be fearful of. The peace that Jesus gives is one that is everlasting and will transcend through every situation. However, this free gift still requires work on our part. In order to receive this peace, we must be willing to surrender all those fears and anxieties that we cannot control. Releasing what is outside of our control releases us from feeling the pressure and worry that comes with it. I heard it once explained like this, that we have two circles in our life. The first circle is called our circle of concern. This represents the situations and people that we are concerned about today. Our family, job, health, finances, marriage, and so forth. These things cause us to worry. Inside the first circle is a smaller circle called our circle of influence. These are things that we have direct control over. For instance, if you have a job interview coming up, you can do everything in your power and influence to prepare. Wear your best outfit, have your resume, show up on time, answer all the questions in the interview. However, after you walk out of that interview, it is no longer in your influence if you will get the job or not. 
However, for God, his circle of concern and circle of influence is identical because he has the power to intervene and move in any situation and circumstance. We can find hope and peace in knowing that our God is all powerful and mighty to move when we cannot. The last line is Psalm 55 states, but as for me, I trust in you. I want that to be the defining factor in my life. I may have the waves of life coming against me with fear and anxiety, but through it all, I would choose to trust in Him. We can either allow our fear to paralyze us, or we can seek out the Father and surrender what we cannot control and move forward with God in faith. As your group studies Psalm 55 together, I encourage you to examine your own heart and mind to see where you may have allowed the enemy to speak fear and anxiety where it does not belong. As a group, I pray that you would be the body of Christ and speak peace, life, and faith into the situations and circumstances of those around you.